Is it car park? It's MOT. The old dog dapped it hunger fast enough to pass anything. <laughs> There you are then, Charlie. One week's wages, holiday pay, P45, and my congratulations on completing your service. Oh, thanks, Betty. I shall miss you all. After six years, it's a big wrench. Big wrench? Hope it's not one of mine you're slipping out in your toolbox, Charlie. <laughs> I was just saying cheerio to Betty. I'll leave today. I've worked out my notice. Not for another one minute, 42 seconds, you haven't. Look, just give him a kiss, choke back the tears, and let him walk slowly off into the sunset. Oh, yeah. But only by being the sort of woman you didn't rush home early to. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to him, Charlie. He's only worried about the competition. Competition? I was more worried when they started evening classes for wrought iron chastity belts. Oh. <laughs> Ta-ra, Gaffer. Yeah, all right, if you made your mind up, the best of luck. Hey, and if you want anything, don't hesitate to let me know. Oh, thanks, Gaffer. Ta-ra, Betty. Bye, Charlie. Good luck. Ta. There you are. He would leave, wouldn't he? Right in the middle of Harry's holiday. Mind you, I never thought he'd do it, you know, set up on his own. Not after all I've done for him. What have you ever done for him? What, Charlie? Well... And apart from that, I've, uh, <laughs> Well, at least I've made him realise that money isn't everything. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. Loyal... You, there's no loyalty about these days. Not like there used to be. When I was in the arm. Yes, yeah. when I was in the arm, you took loyalty for granted. You could rely on your mates to stand by you for thick and... More thick. I mean, take my mate Crusher Yeah, I've taken him for years. Every time you get maudlin. Uh, magnificent bloke, old Crusher. Six foot five of drunken, rippling lust. Trusted each other with well lives, me and Crusher. Mm, but you can't trust people anymore. It's all right you extract in the what's it, but you can't. That's all right. Anyway, you better put an advert in the Mercury for Charlie's replacement. You know, the usual thing. Top rates paid, assisted travel. Well, don't forget about the Trades Description Act. I mean, since when have you paid top rates? To the council twice a year, dear. And assisted travel? You can bump his bike tires up if you go flat. Get you! If you don't get your backside off that box, I'll kick you off it. That's him now, whispering a few words of encouragement to the workforce. <laughs> hey, and just go and get that yard cleaned up. It's making my car look tidy. <laughs> Murder that gentleman. Any messages? One reply to the advert about Charlie's replacement, and he's here now. Hello, Fred. Hey, cross you. Hello, Fred. By a hey, I, hey, I, I don't believe we were only talking about you yesterday. Hey, this is him. This is the lad, Crusher McCann. What, Genghis McCann? The man who's been in more glass houses than a ten-inch tomato. <laughs> only the one and only back. Hey, this could be your lucky week. I'm surprised you're still in one piece. By a hey, where the devil have you come from? How long's it been? About 25 years. I, God, last time I saw you, you were best man at my wedding. Oh, you would have been if it hadn't been for the stag night. <laughs> He, he was the reason I were a day late. <laughs> but, well, I mean, what the devil are you? I, I didn't even know you were in the area. Well, I only came up last night. I was hoping to see you. I stayed at the station. I'd be made redundant, you see, and I was reading the local paper and I saw your advert. I was just wondering if it was a chance. Uh, temporarily, you know. I, I like to keep on the move nowadays. <laughs> a chance, eh? There's a job here for as long as you want it. Thanks, Fred. Hey, this calls for a celebration. Come on, it's nearly opening time. I can't talk with dry teeth. Hey, I'm taking Crush around to the Red Cow for a touch of the tincture. Well, what shall I do if there are any more applicants for the vacancy? Tell them it's being filled. <laughs> hey. Right. What's it going to be, the old little start of the double? Or do you fancy half a cowboy of the local sheep dip? Not for me. Not I'll have a small tomato juice. Tomato juice? They give that stuff to vegetarian vampire bats. <laughs> you don't want the gap resetting on your spark plug. Are you, uh, cop the barmaid? It seems quite nice. Well, no. That's the understatement of the year, isn't it? You wait till she mixes a cocktail. You'll be more than shaken, you'll be stirred. I'm sorry, Fred, I'm off females. What, yours was God's gift to women? They couldn't wait to get you wrapping on them. A home, security, a wife and family. Do you have any family? Yeah, I've got one semi-detached lad. Is it university study and social security forms? Oh, so much. I don't need a place to sleep. 
Talking about when we've had this drink, you can come back with me. No, Fred, I couldn't. Yeah, and don't worry about my missus. One word from Doris, I shall, I shall down dishcloth. <laughs> oh, well, as a booze up, this is becoming a very poor second to a kamikaze reunion. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Well, you don't know what it's like to have no friends. You're talking about I'm your friend, you whimpering, snivelling bleeper. Come on, order a decent drink and shut up. All right, Fred, I'll have a large brandy. I said I was your friend, not your benefactor. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Could we have a couple of pints of slush, please? Somebody been fiddling with your contrast? <laughs> you know, you've got eyes like currants and a workhouse geek. Very small and not many of them. <laughs> it's not the morning, Betty. Has Crusher arrived yet? He was first in this morning, a good half hour before the charge of the late brigade. He was full of beans. I oh, know, they were mine. He had them with the rest of my breakfast. <laughs> you mean he slept at your place last night? He might have done, but I certainly didn't. He chucked himself on the set. He had to sleep in a chair. Well, why didn't you go to bed? Because Doris was in it. And if I'd have wakened her up, I would have been. <laughs> Don't tell me you've blighted your trough again. I think you could say that. She's only talking to me through the cat. <laughs> well, Crusher seemed cheerful enough. Well, oh, you don't have to tell me. He was up with the crack bashing about like... Death Watch Beetle in a knocking up pole. <laughs> I don't know what's happened to him. He's, he's gone potty about unscrewing anything mechanical. I took the central eating boiler to bits for some strange reason and couldn't put it back together again. I had to get changed standing over the toaster. <laughs> I was lucky only the bread got burnt. <laughs> this damn pen won't work. Must probably join the union. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I'm writing to collards. I know the pen is mightier than the swear word, but what's wrong with your tapper meter? Well, I happened to mention that one of my keys was sticking, so Mr. McCann fixed that as well. <laughs> I wish he wasn't too big to thump. Where is he now? <laughs> oh, follow me ears. <laughs> I can't stand that crusher much longer. Everything he touches just disintegrates. He's, he's grounded the flymo, cuckooed the clock, and turned my car into a two ton rickshaw. I'm sure he's only trying to help. Yeah, well, I do wish he wouldn't. How can I have a six and seven eighths skull and a seven and three eighths brain? Another night on the tiles? I'm afraid that's how it finished up. He insisted on making cheese au gratin for our supper. And finished up sticking the non-stick pan to the cookbook. <laughs> I'd chuck it all in the dustbin and go around the red cow. By the time I got home, I felt like a walking waterbed. Tell me, what does Mrs. N think about all these goings-on? I wouldn't know. 
I haven't managed to negotiate visiting rights yet. <laughs> I've got to do something, Betty. I, well, I'm, I'm lumbered. I mean, I can't kick him out. I don't know what he'd get up to. I mean, he was ready to chuck his head in the gas oven when he came here. Don't be silly. Nobody can afford to do that anymore. Uh, you don't know that, Crusher. He's, he's very stubborn. If, if he'd made his mind up to commit suicide, he'd do it if it killed him. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, at least I've got him on the wine. And last night he started singing, but I can't seem to get him at the other. <laughs> Has, hasn't he tried any hanky panky with you? No, he has not. And if he did, he'd get my hanky tied tight round his panky. <laughs> you mean absolutely nothing at all? Nothing. And if you ask me, I think he's frightened of women. Hey. Hey. I think you've hit the nail on the head, but. Because he's changed completely. He's, he's, he's completely lost his confidence as far as women are concerned. I bet, I bet, I bet what's happened is he's, he's seeing life passing him by and he's, he's still not getting married. And he, I bet that's why he's got this compulsion to keep repairing things. It's, it's all psychological. It's in the mind. I bet subconsciously he's trying to prove he'd make somebody a good husband. Thank you, Dr. Moffat. Do you guarantee a cure or your mania back? Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not kidding. This, this could be the answer, Betty. I think we've got to find Crusher a wife. One of these days, you're going to fall apart at the schemes. You do realise that it could cost you about 50 pounds at a marriage bureau. What, for a wife? Get a decent set of spanners for that. <laughs> no, I, uh, I think I'll go and have a word with the guru of the grocery trade. Who? Henry Dodd at the corner shop. But I thought he only dealt in cooked meats. <laughs> uh, very droll. No, but his missus left him about three years ago. You know, and he joined one of these singles clubs. You know these singles clubs? He had, he had the time of his life. Out with a different bird every night. He must have a few addresses and phone numbers in stock. Well, I'm sure he's going to let you have some of them. Oh, I don't see why not. He's not been using them since he had his accident. What accident? His missus came back. Oh. <laughs> All right, Henry. Mind you, don't get a little behind in your orders. Here he is, last of the small spenders. Come to pay off another instalment on your octo cube. <laughs> you insult all your customers like this, or is this a special offer? I'm quite civil to 50% of them, but then he's a nice chap. Now, what do you want, Fred? Good old worth eating. Worth eating? This place is full of rare and costly delicacies from the four corners of the earth. Five, counting the faggots. <laughs> faggots? I'm not touching them. I've just found out what they've seen them. Have you got any pies that haven't got preservation orders on them? Individual pork pies. Mind you, they don't say which individual they're made from. <laughs> Sober World War Three. that'll do me. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you get an instruction booklet out on how to take the cellophane wrapping? Fred, do I detect a cry for help in the resigned recklessness of your choice? Well, as a matter of fact, Henry, I did want to have a word with you. I, actually, I want a bit of advice. Are you taking that pie? Oh, cool. 20p. <laughs> hmm. That's got rid of my problem. What's yours? <laughs> well, it's a bit embarrassing, really, but you see, I've, uh, I've got a friend who's in need of a bit of female company. Okay, friend, go on. I've heard that one before. No, no, straight. Honestly, an old pal of mine from the army is new to the area, like, you know, and well, he's a bit lonely, and I just thought you might know some unattached female, you know, from that singles club you were a member of, you know, that I could introduce him to. No, no, I can't. I'm sorry, Fred, I can't get involved. It's more than the quarter share, which is all I shall have left in this place if my wife leaves me again is worth. A bit desperate, Henry. <laughs> well, well, if you're that push, why don't you try advertising for one? Put a card in my window. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, that. How much is it? Fifteen pence, and I don't take higher purchase. <laughs> right, hey, it must be anonymous, you know. I mean, so anonymous, nobody will know who's advertising. Right, well, you tell me what you want to say and leave it to me. Oh, well, I've never done it before. Something subtle, like man seeks woman, I should <laughs> You'll have to be a bit more specific than that. Hey, leave it to me. I'll pep it up a bit. And if there are any callers, I'll give you a ring. Right. Now, what about the meeting, please? I don't know. A pub somewhere, I should think. Yeah. Hey, but not the Red Cow. My pal fixed their beer pump last night. The landlady's still trying to dry out her direct was. Hey. I tell you what, make it the snug in the three tons, all right? I swear their optics are double glazed, but the landlord stutters a bit. You can get three rounds in while he's calling time.
Doris Moffat. Hello, Moffat Engineering. I'm not sure if he's in at the moment. Are you in? Who is it? Who is it speaking, please? Henry Dodd, and it's personal. Yeah. Will you hold on a moment? Henry, Fred Moffat. Hey, Fred, there's been a reply to your card. A woman rang up, but she wouldn't give her name. Uh, hang on a minute, will you, Henry? Betty, go and tell Crusher I want him in here. They'll leave us alone for a few minutes. Right. Have several cigarettes. <laughs> a good cough. <laughs> Henry, uh, wait, what does she sound like? Well, she said she was just on the wrong side of 30. They're all right, Fred. They don't yell, they don't tell, and they're awfully grateful. <laughs> hey, and she said, she said her measurements are 46, 26, 36. Hope to God it's in that order. <laughs> Did you uh, arrange a meeting place? Yes, yes, she'll be in the three tons tonight at eight o'clock. Oh, and she said you'll be able to recognise her because she's wearing a red hat. Red hat? That sounds interesting. <laughs> You know what goes with a red hat? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Henry, I'll see you later. Betty said you wanted to see me. Oh, yes, Chris, uh, about tonight. Oh, you're not crying off, are you? No, not while I've got a third of my liver left. <laughs> no, I thought tonight we'd have a bit of a change. You've got the uh, three tons. You know, they've got a nice little snug there, and I've, uh, I've got a friend who wants to meet you. Someone else from the mob? Well, no, I, I don't think she's ever been in the parachute regiment. <laughs> She? Now, look, Fred, I've told you, not for me. Women are definitely out. Yes, I, I know that, Chris, but quite frankly, I, uh, Well, I need your help. It's... It's a bit embarrassing, really, but, you see, it's... It's Doris. Doris? Yeah, well, you know, in Doris's popularity poll at the moment, I'm rated about three points lower than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. Yes, well, I'm... I'm sorry if I've caused trouble. Uh, it's not just you, lad. It, it started before you came, you see. It's... Well, to tell you the truth, it's... It's a woman. You know what they're like, these women, you... Give them a kind word and a couple of gin and tonics, and before you know it, that you know they won't leave you alone. And, well, quite honestly, it's got a bit embarrassing, and that's really what's getting up Doris's nose, you know. So, you really, you're the only one that can help me. But how? Well, you know, tonight when I introduce you, moving on her. You know, work the old McCann magic, you know, turn on the old charm. Try and get her to forget me, like you used to do with all my birds. <laughs> I don't think I could now. What, you? A man as battle on us carries such names as Nissan, Nelly, and Knickerbocker Gloria. <laughs> It'll be like catching fish in hose pipe. She'll never know what it is. All right, Fred, I'll do my best. That's good enough for me, sunshine. <laughs> she should be here somewhere. See anybody wearing a red hat? Yeah, she's over in the corner, look, with her back to it. She seems to be rather a large woman. There's 15 stone, a cuddly corset. Uh, don't forget Newton's fourth law of motion when it comes to women, you know. It's always the streamlined bodies that offer the greatest resistance. What's the name, Fred? The name? Uh, look, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go over and prepare the ground. I'll introduce you when you bring the drinks over. What drinks? The ones you're going to get in. Elspeth. <laughs> Crusher. Oh, Fred. Doris. <laughs> It's three days since that happened. Surely Doris isn't still going on about it. No, that's the trouble. She's still staying quiet about it. She's even stopped talking to the cat. Never mind. You'll soon be holding hands. I think we'll have to. It'll stop her throwing things. I can't see how you didn't know that Crusher was married. Well, how could I? I haven't talked to him for years. And obviously, it's, it's, it's being married that's changed him. But you told me he was woman mad. He was when there was somebody else's. <laughs> Apparently, she follows him everywhere. She's potty about him. And looking for him, this time he beat her to it. Well, where's he gone? He didn't stay long enough to say. I just hope to God he don't come back. Let this be somebody else. Come in. Hello, Gaffer. Well, oh, thank the Lord. Ah, the wanderer returns. To what do we owe the honour then, Charlie? C can I have a word? Yes, it'll probably be a rude one, but come in. <laughs> What do you want? Um, can I have my old job back? Well, it didn't take you long to join the upper echelon of the self-employed skint. Pardon? It doesn't really matter. Actually, you're very lucky, because I've only just got rid of the pain in the nether regions who took your place. So, so long as you don't expect a seat on the board, you're in. I never expected one. That's a bit of luck, then. I warned you things would be tough on your own, didn't I? Oh, but they weren't. We were doing great. In fact, I set another chap on on yesterday. Well, what do you want your job back for? 
Oh, well, this new fella tried to fix Bert Barker's drilling machine and it collapsed. <laughs> Bert's in hospital. Ah, uh, what's he suffering from? Compensation? Well, I don't know, but he's got his leg up. And <laughs> as we haven't got another drill and as the wedding's off as well, I packed it all in. You've not fallen out with Mary? Well, I've been so busy, she complained, I never took her anywhere. So I took her to work. <laughs> I caught her messing around with this new fella around the back. He's moved in with her mother now. Yeah, you're better off without her, Charlie. Oh, I'm not gaffer. I don't half miss her. I'd go around then and punch him myself if he wasn't so big. <laughs> big? <laughs> What's his name? McCann. They call him Crusher. <laughs> oh, no, this is where we came in. Listen, Charlie, if I can get you Mary back, do you promise to stay with me? Oh, yes, gaffer. No more silly business about starting up on your own. Oh, no, Gaffer. Right. Betty, get me the three tons on the phone. It's a far, far better thing I do now than I should have done a few days ago and we wouldn't have been in all this trouble. You sure? Yes, Gaffer. Right. Hello, three tons. Can I speak to Mrs. Crusher, please? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, sorry, I mean Mrs. McCann. What are you doing? I'm letting Elspeth know where her rubby is, aren't I? I can't go through this lot again. <laughs> oh, He's the Gaffer. to the left and to the right because they're all the same in office when you make it overnight resents the time he spends on paperwork and VAT keeps the money that the tax man doesn't see he's a gaffer doesn't need to take advice he's 